This exhibition was produced by the West India Committee in partnership with the British National Army Museum and generously supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund in Britain. We start really with just an overview of the situation of the British Army in the Caribbean, how it came to be involved, why, what was happening in the region, why was the British Army needed, and the various wars that were fought within the region uh, were also fought in Europe as well. So whatever affected the great powers of Europe also spilled over to their colonies in the Caribbean. The West India Regiments were founded in 1795 and this was a breakthrough for the British Army because it was the first time that they actually were recruited on location near a conflict zone. The way that, in which they did that here in the Caribbean was literally to buy slaves and at one time the British Army was uh, the largest slave owner in British history. But actually the distinction was profound in that they ensured that those servicemen received the same pay and conditions as their white counterparts. And indeed, uh, you will find that the British Army, under the Mutiny Act of 1807, was the first to ab ab abolish slavery. Despite being treated as free men and serving soldiers, the way in which the West India regiments were recruited caused great concern among the men. Because they had been purchased as slaves originally, even though they had, were treated as free men, they feared they would one day be returned to slavery. As a result, uh, when one, uh, one such occasion occurred, the men of the 8th West India Regiment rebelled at Dominica. However, this caused the British government to realise the difficulty of the situation and in 1807 with the Mutiny Act, it was declared that all men serving in the West India Regiments were free men and were to be treated as any other soldiers of the British Army. The Napoleonic Wars marked one of the most turbulent times in Caribbean history. And here, the West India Regiment served us well. Uh, they saw action in St. Vincent, St. Martin, Suriname, and of course, Dominica and Guadeloupe. And indeed, it was said that none were more brave or active than during the invasion of the Saints. These regiments were um, equipped for invasion and they left an indelible mark on the heritage of these islands. The First World War was, a, was an important milestone for the West India soldier. Um, for them it was the first time that they actually went to the mother country which they attended for training and preparation for service in Europe. Recruitment posters referred to West Indians as men of every class, colour and creed which was very important because we were one of the most diverse populations on the planet and indeed still are today. The um, training was very difficult and indeed before they even saw um, combat um, we lost many people due to the cold conditions in which they uh, were, were forced to reside through flu and other fevers. But having said that, they were noted in history as some of the most robust soldiers. I think there was one example when a handful of Jamaicans moved something of the order of 200 tonnes of ammunition in a matter of mere hours. In the Second World War, the Caribbean Regiment was formed quite late in the war in 1944 and thus did not really get a chance to fight. However, West Indians served in a variety of other regiments in the British Army and most notable perhaps was the contribution by the women of the Caribbean in the Auxilii Territorial Service. They first joined in 1943 and took up a wider range of support roles in Britain ranging from radar operators to clerks, drivers, decoders, and mechanics. Some even served in anti-aircraft gun crews. With the end of the Napoleonic Wars, the threat to the Caribbean diminished and thus, whilst serving in the region, the West India Regiments were largely garrison troops, although there was one notable instance uh, in 1872 where they fought at the Battle of Orange Walk in modern-day Belize. However, it was thought that West Indian servicemen could also serve quite well in Western Africa and thus for much of the century a West India regiment, sometimes even two, could be found in the British colonies in that region. And there they fought in a variety of wars, uh, particularly against the Ashanti Confederacy. Uh, also of note in this period, um, popularly it is thought that the first black Caribbean officer in the British Army did not serve until the First World War, but research has shown that there were uh, black officers in the British Army even in the early 19th century, particularly one William Ferguson uh, from Jamaica who served as a surgeon and eventually rose to become governor of the colony of Sierra Leone. The British Army 
British Army is renowned for recognising um, its uh, servicemen for their achievements. The ultimate prize which is awarded for valour is the Victoria Cross. And as a, as a Hodge, I'm very pleased to say that the first black man to win a Victoria Cross was a member of my family, one Samuel Hodge, for his services in Africa. Indeed, here on, on this uh, presentation, you'll find an Antiguan, Henry Jerome. And strangely enough, the first Jew to win a Victoria Cross was one Alexander Dupas, who won it during the First World War, serving in the Indian Army. Um, and he won, he won that posthumously. Unfortunately, he died very young in battle. Um, but he was the first Jew and, a, more importantly, a Jamaican. Um, today, we have wonderful people like uh, um, Mr. DeBarry, who um, has recently won at the Victoria Cross in the Iraq War. We uh, end the exhibition with looking at the most West, uh, recent West Indian contribution to the British Army in the form of two new regiments formed in the British Overseas Territories of the Cayman Islands and the Turks and Caicos Islands. These two new regiments, uh, here you see the badge of the new Turks and Caicos Regiment, uh, are reserve regiments and are to be called up in times of great need or natural disaster.